dollars a year. That's why they pay athletes these fantastic salaries. I was listening to the radio the other day. They just contracted to pay one one player on one team six million dollars a year. Can you believe this? And why is that? It's the Roman circus. What does the emperor do when the people become restive? And when the people are asking questions, and when the people don't like the policies of the emperor, he sends them to the circus. He creates a circus. He builds a giant coliseum, and he begins to throw the Christians to the lions. He has great chariot races, and football games, and basketball games, all to keep the idiots preoccupied with things that don't mean anything. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, my good people. Uh, it's your boy Quick Kicks, Sneak V Sneaker. It's a little bit of quick thoughts that you saw in that last video that I just showed you. Um, now, I don't mean this in any way to offend any athletes or anything like that, because you do have to work hard to get to a certain place in terms of being an athlete, you know, especially if you're on a huge stage. Kwame Brown made it to the biggest stage, was the number one draft pick. You know, people treat him like he, I don't know, like he mopped McDonald's floors or something. I'm like, I would love to be the number one draft pick. I could care less what anybody says. If I'm the number one draft pick, I'm the number one draft pick. You can never take that away from me. Uh, so, like, you know, it, 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 people treat athletes like, a, like they're, you know, on certain plateaus when they reach a certain amount of success and others if they don't reach that su success they treat them as less when actually they are pretty successful if they made whatever million dollars some people don't even make that in a lifetime but whatever um but besides that the truth of the matter is all of it is just a show literally all of it is just to distract us from things that are going on and that they don't want us to know, see, or understand. Uh, and when you think about the sports are the main distraction. All year, they're all year round. You have so many different types of sports, whether it's football, American, or European, uh, basketball, baseball, uh, hockey. You have something for everyone. The more sports, the more distractions. These distractions go on and on and on, and there's nothing that anyone can ever do about it. Now, the people in power, like, when you think about it, no one should get paid that money just to be watched to play a game. Period. But, period. Everybody deserves the money that they're earning, but some things just aren't equated properly. That's just the truth of the matter. If you don't agree, that's fine. It's just to keep us away from trying to find out the truth, investigate the truth, be diligent with the truth. Um, you know, a lot of things that are going on now are a result of things that happened in the past, which one, I don't believe in living in the past. I believe in trying to move forward, but I do believe that the past usually comes back. If you look throughout history, there have been pandemics before. It's usually every hundred or so years have been um there have been diseases before there have been viruses before like all of these things throughout time we've been able to cure or whatever you know but there have been several um things that we have been able to overcome um there are also several thousands of things that are hidden from us that we will never understand i'm not one of those people who think there's some illuminati and you gotta give your blood and i'm not one of those people that thinks that but I do believe that there are a percentage of people in this country, in this world, who have the most power, the most influence, the most to gain from us being distracted by things that are absolutely useless to us. Yes, entertainment is one thing, but people, one, people become obsessed with things, regardless of what it is, smoking, drinking, sports people can become obsessed with obsession becomes blindness so you're kind of like a horse you got those blinders on when you obsess with something everything is directed towards that you're not really thinking about the things that are going on outside of that 
for example, I'm not sure what videos are real, what videos are fake, but I do believe there are aliens. Call me crazy, but, and I never, and I didn't always believe this. I really didn't. But over time, when you start realizing how science works and how the universe is expanding and things like that, you start to realize how small we are. Which means if something is that big, there's got to be other things that are significantly bigger than us. <laughs> so that's one reason why I believe in aliens. You know, the reality is, is that we are being blinded by things. And, you know, some of the messages that I'm hearing from, and it's not only Kwame, Kwame Brown anymore. I'm starting to hear a lot of people, and I don't know if it's a, a movement. I don't know if people are just following. I don't know if people are just doing it for, you know, whatever the case may be. But knowledge is power. Um, and the only way we can actually help ourselves in this crazy, unpredictable world where we have to raise our children is making sure that they do have the necessary tools to succeed, to move forward in life successfully, and to not fall victim to this that we are trying to break through now. Because, you know, everybody's trying to break through this what we have going on now because we all feel and we all know that something's not right about this system something's not right about the way things are done the way things are taught um the way things have been taught that everybody has figured that out at this point and there are those people who are you know non-believers who think that oh well it's you know people are just trying to keep uh race and stuff and Listen, it doesn't matter about race. It, it matters about knowledge. And if it's going to, and if you are going to share knowledge, sharing knowledge is contingent upon that knowledge being accurate. And if it's not accurate, then everything taught from then on is going to have inaccuracies. I don't have any clue as to what the perfect way to handle the situation is. But what I do know is we are going to have to start making sure that our children do know how to work with their hands. Um, we are gonna have to raise some builders. We're gonna have to raise some creators. We're gonna have to raise some really brave men and women because I don't know exactly. I know in my lifetime, I've seen some incredibly terrifying and amazing things. I can't even imagine what the future holds with the way technology is working, the way conflict is rising. I felt compelled to to just try and encourage us to continue to educate our kids, man. This, you know, I, I, I don't know how to ingrain this into our culture more, but we have to, we have to, we have to educate our kids more. There are too many kids that are doing things that shouldn't be done. Like, you know, I, and I'm not going to bring up people that I know. But, like, there's people that I know whose kids are, like, they're under 10 and they're going down the wrong path in terms of weapons and stuff like that. That's just crazy to me. When I was a kid, like, yeah, we had weapons, but it was those plastic nunchucks. It wasn't, like, real knives and bringing guns to school. And it's, like, crazy to me. And, I, and it's, it's sad. But it's also lack of education. And a lot of times, it's not only the kid that doesn't have the education, it's the parent that isn't educated. So if you don't have one person educated, they can't educate the person that they're raising. Like, it's just, oh, it's, it's so frustrating. I just, you know, I implore everybody, we all, if we can find help, we need to seek help, whatever that may be, whether we need to learn how to discipline our kid a different way because it's not working, or whatever the case may be. But either way, we have to get these kids on a path to where they are learning the right things. They're learning how to be better than we were in our past. And that's really what everything should be contingent on. Because these distractions that, that they got going on, they're just distractions. They're, they're, it's, it's not progress. You know, progress you can see. A distract like a distraction you can see but a distraction you are too involved in progress you are excelling at something if you're just watching yeah you might know basketball history but how is that helping your child like you know like yes you sh if, if your kid can make it to the nba and they can work hard enough to make it an nba mlb whatever the case may be go for it if they can get that bag in their pocket go for it but the reality is there's probably, what, 1-2% that's going to make that? 
outside of that, they got to work hard to be something that they're going to be labeled. My thing is, I told my son, oh, I try to teach my son, you create your own label. Just because somebody calls you something doesn't mean that's the only way that you think. They can have an opinion about you. Their opinion is not supposed to mold you. You are a product of what we teach you, what you learn, and how you progress as a man in life. And that's what's important. Like, like other people's opinion, I try to teach them all the time. Other people's opinion about you, if you worry about that, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Family and friends, you know, you take their opinion with a grain of salt. Of course, they're going to have opinions. But, you know, it, 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 every once in a while, you'll get a real opinion that you reflect and you're like, wow, okay, that person's right. But 99.9% .9 of the time, those other people's opinion mean absolutely nothing. It's invalid. And most of the time, it's them actually hating. So, you know, it is what it is. But, no, I just wanted to hop on today with that video because that really, that really hit me. Because all of these distractions and stuff... That like you see all of these NBA players all over the place, and you know while they're doing media, that's not really the distraction. It's when you got twenty, thirty, forty thousand people, a hundred, a hundred thousand people go to college games. Like what? On one Saturday, how many millions of people are that? Is that out in college towns or whatever across the United States filling up stadiums? And people in front of their TVs. Like, that's just... Just think about that distraction. That's, like, insane to me. You know, and it's... When you think of college, those are kids. Those are mostly kids. You know, it's... Uh, and shout out to... Oh, last thing. Shout out to Maria Hill. I'm going to try and post that video at the end of this. But as a man with a black daughter, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that message. I appreciate what you stand for. Um, I hope you have great success in the future. I think you're an absolutely wonderful, uh, like, announcer. Like, I, I have no, like, I used to think, like, why is she doing college and NBA? She should just be doing one because, I mean, even though she was good in both, I'm like, you don't really go from the office to being on the field with Nick Saban. I was like, that was weird. She, but she's awesome at covering NBA and that they said she, she used to be a basketball player, which, you know, when, like I said, I'm from the hood. I'm from Harlem. We used to play ball sometime at Rucker, Kingdom, whatever the case may be. So I know how it is, what you got to do when you play ball and, you know, how, how you always got to have your guard up when you go on the road. Let's just put it like that, you know, and as a black woman in that field, I'm pretty sure everywhere she goes, even at her home at ESPN, she feels like she's on the road be just because that's how it is um but whatever the case may be ma'am thank you that message was incredible you are an incredible woman you're an incredible an incredible inspiration to young women I wish you the greatest of success and you deserve more money than those other people there <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say but anyway um yeah i just had to get that out real quick uh that's your boy quick kicks quick thoughts just want to come at you thank you guys for joining again love you all peace Talk to you soon. Hey, black woman. I just wanted you to know that uh, you're pretty dope. Like, I don't care what society tells you. They might tell you that your skin's not pretty enough, that there's not enough shades to match your makeup, that although all women make 82 cents to the dollar on white men, you make 62 cents. They may tell you that you don't deserve that promotion, even though you know you do. They may tell you that when you get the promotion that you only got it because you were black. But we know that's not true. I just want you to know that I believe in you. So resist the urge to fall in line. And don't be humble, girl, brag, because you are so fine. You're the only one that can do what you do on a daily basis and never say boo hoo to anyone because you are the one, the black woman that's stronger than everyone.